Hi, I'm Lena Rao. We're here with our, with our Ask a VC series. Um, I'm here with Managing Director of Menlo Ventures, Sean Carolyn. Welcome, Sean. Thank you. Um, I, want, I want to go over your bio just a little bit. Um, uh, you were an early investor uh, in Telenav, um, a public company now, PlaySpan, um, which was acquired by Visa, a mobile gaming um, type of uh, monetization startup. And then, um, of course, Siri. You were an early mm -hmm. investor in Siri, which was acquired by Apple and now powers you know, their voice technology. Um, I, those are a lot of varied sort of uh, investments uh, across the board. What is your focus and uh, what are you really excited about uh, going forward in terms of technologies? Well, um, I think as an investor, you're always looking for new opportunities. And, and if you look at a theme in a lot of the uh, investment approach that Menlo takes and I've taken is, is being very thesis oriented where you come up with, hey, here's a space where there's a lot of room to run. And then you go uh, meet all the companies, talk to all the entrepreneurs, uh, look in the case of Siri and Research Lab, SRI, uh, SRI International is a local research lab. And you're just looking for, hey, what's new and is going to have a really how'd, strong impact. How'd you find SRI? How did you source that deal? Um, that was, I was on the, it, we divide and conquer at, at a partnership, and I was on the research lab side of the uh, <laughs> flank. And so uh, there's, there's one at Stanford, and SRI was another one. Norm Winarski, who runs it there, uh, you know, reached out to him, went over there, and started to learn what the stuff they were up to. They actually have a very good program for spinning out their technologies. They do a lot of government. Uh, contract work and there's a, a law that lets them take the stuff they make for government and then commercialize it for commercial sector so I uh, got over there early and established some relationships and then when Doug Kitless who was the founder of Siri started there I got a really early conversation we were actually the, the very first investor right yeah that must have been was it a competitive round at that point it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this uh, by the time when you take that approach of, of being very thesis oriented by the time that you end up uh, meeting a company that falls right into where you're converging on, you have context that mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes even the CEO of the company doesn't have because you've been able to talk to so many people in the space and so you kind of come in telling them their own uh, roadmap <laughs> in some cases and, sh and Dog, Dog, Adam and Tom were the three founders of Siri. From the very beginning, we, we really shared a vision for what this could become and, and we were you know throughout the, the life cycle invested heavily were the largest shareholder when Apple bought them and, and really enjoyed working with the team. That's great. Um, I want to jump to one of our uh, reader questions. Court has a, a something related to Siri. Do you think um, huge innovation in web technology has peaked? Uh, is there a new shift coming? Is it wearable computing, virtual reality? Um, what, what's your feeling on that? What, what's the next wave of disruption? So without question, it has not peaked, I'd say. Um, it's just getting started, right? I mean, the iPhone's only uh, three years old, uh, or something like that, and the App Store is a relatively new phenomenon. And we've been investing in mobile technology for uh, 10 years, actually. Moby TV and Telenet were very early investments. And the process to get uh, apps onto phones used to be you go strike a deal with carriers. So just the advent of the ability of an independent developer to write a mobile app a mobile app to use GPS in the phone, access personal information, uh, and then get that in front of the public in a matter of, of, of weeks is just unprecedented. So I think that's really interesting. The Google Glass phenomenon is, is kind of the step beyond something in your pocket. You know, you're always wearing it. This ambient, ubiquitous computing is really interesting. A lot going on in big data, uh, cloud. Uh, we're very excited about a bunch of different areas. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think that it's just getting ramped up. Um, I want to touch upon uh, some internal news at Men Menlo Ventures. Um, you guys just saw the departure of uh, partner Shervin Pishavar, um, who uh, left the, the firm a few weeks ago to start his own sort of um, startup building venture. Uh, and then you added a new partner, Venki um, Ganeshan, uh, uh, who focuses, I guess, a little bit in the enterprise, as, as what you were talking about. Um, What's sort of the transition behind that? What's the um, the reason for that that sort of shift? Yeah, I, although they were announced to the news at approximately the same time, they were completely unrelated events, actually. Um, and Shervin is a venture advisor for us now. He used to be, uh, you know, managing director, but we think of it as role change. You know, still huge, 
Shervin fans and continue to work together. He's a really strong outbound guy and, and meets a lot of entrepreneurs. I think is going to continue to source deals for us and, and help shepherd them through to investments. Uh, he had a really powerful idea of his own in Sherpa mm -hmm. and was interested in pursuing that. So I think it was, it was a great kind of mutually beneficial way to, to keep both of us working together. Uh, and the Vanky news is something, you know, we've been in the process of looking for a managing director for well over a year, and it's a really hard search to find somebody who has a great track record, uh, fits really well culturally with the firm, uh, and is willing to move firms. And, and we found that in Vanky. Um, it's been kind of conversations been going on for a long time, and then timing finally was right for him to, uh, to come over. So thrilled to have him. He does both enterprise and consumer uh, as well, which is our strategy. You know, we're seed to growth, enterprise and consumer, and uh, he was an awesome fit. You know, fell in love with him from the <laughs> very beginning of meeting him. So, Sean, you have um, kind of an interesting uh, new role ahead of you. Um, we actually had Tony Conrad from True Ventures on um, mm. a few months ago, and we talked a little bit about being a CEO and an investor at the same time. And you're actually going down that path, it sounds like, um, with a new uh, stealthy startup. So tell us a little bit. I mean, I know you can't really say much, but yeah. you are becoming a CEO of a company, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a process that you take lightly. I mean, to, to found and assert and run a company is a huge amount of effort. And uh, I thank my wife for being very patient with me uh, and supportive of, of the endeavor. But I've had two jobs for you know, over a year now and continue on my board seats. You know, I'm on the boards of Roku and, and Yumi and Telenav and, and you know, several companies in view. And so um, to, you know, still deliver them a plus service and really be involved in, in their strategy and run the companies and then run the company has been a challenge. But uh, it was an area that I looked around for many years for a solution to. It was you know, email overload. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of these things where there's huge opportunity. For billions of people yeah. have the problem. It's like everybody knows they have the problem. Everybody's looking for solutions. It's, uh, it's really hard uh, to fix. But... Um, after looking for hundred, across hundreds of companies for what's the right way to attack it, uh, came up with an idea and then decided to found the company. And, and fortunately, uh, actually the first time I pitched my partners, they said no. They <laughs> <laughs> said go back to work. <laughs> but I begged for a little bit of seed money and then got a prototype up, uh, based on a slide deck you know, handed off uh, a PowerPoint presentation to some coders and they came back with a functioning prototype and then repitched and the whole partnership got excited about it. And, and it's particularly a big sacrifice, uh, you know, for a, a firm because, you know, it's, it takes time and, and right. time is, you know, what you use to, to create new value. And because of the unique nature of it, obviously the Menlo ownership is very high in this and it could have a substantial impact on the fund if it's successful. So. We felt like it was a good use. So will you be taking on any new deals at this time, or are you going to be sort of, you know, do, use it, using your time to focus on your existing board seats and investments, and then, um, you know, of course, this new startup? Um, I led an uh, investment in a company called Scan last year. So it's, uh, as you know, deals come from all sorts of, of different sources, and Part of what a VC sometimes does is a lot of conference, a lot of outbound, a lot of lunches. I'm doing less of that. Uh, obviously, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of work to do at the company. So mostly uh, considering kind of inbound existing relationships types of investments right now. So um, done a number of seeds last year and then, and then scan. But uh, pr primary focus for this uh, year is definitely get handle launched. We're going to be launching in the next couple months. It's called hand handle 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 okay. handle dot com, uh, and and uh, we're really excited about it. Awesome. Um, I, I want to switch over uh, a little bit to another one of our um, reader questions, uh, and and this is sort of interesting considering your investments and in things that didn't initially make money, but then eventually became big businesses. How do you evaluate the worth of startups at the initial stage where there is no revenue yet? Uh, revenue is one metric of success, and I'd argue in many cases it's not the most important measure of success. So it depends in some extent on are you talking about enterprise and consumer. So in consumer, 
the most important metric to me is retention. So somebody hears about your product, they download it on their phone or they log into the website. Are they there seven days later? Are they there 30 days later? If, if they are, and that happens in significant percentages, our internal metrics suggest you know, greater than a 30% retention rate means you really have something. And that is really hard to create. Uh, the statistics on iPhone apps are 99% don't get used after the first day of download. So retention we care a lot about. Uh, growth of users and frequency at which they use are both also important metrics, neither of which have to do with revenue. And then at some point, you got to be generating profits <laughs> unless you want to keep raising venture money. And so revenue comes at the end. So that's the consumer markets. In enterprise, uh, you know, you don't pop out of Stanford and start a new enterprise storage company. It, it just doesn't happen. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of context that you need, a lot of industry uh, nuances and understandings. And so in those, a lot of the value is in the team. So you see people who, you know, were VPs here, you know, CEOs there, and they have a next new idea. Uh, we're in investors in a company called Avere uh, that is in the storage space. That is a CEO who was a former Menlo entrepreneur at a company called Spinnaker, got bought by NetApp, great uh, run the first time around, had a really successful product that NetApp had to take off the market, and they bought it, and then comes back with his same team and wants to do it again. So uh, with enterprise, a lot of it's like early s specs, you know, how well do they perform versus key metrics in the industry, and then the team, and then are they executing, and then revenue always, not always, but often follows. Well, uh, Sean, I really appreciate you stopping by the studio today, and best of luck as a CEO in your new startup. Thank you.